Hi, this is Red Talks. Welcome. Today's topic, I want to talk about something that not a lot of people bring up when it comes to talking about marriage and divorce. Um, first off, this video was inspired by another YouTube MGTOW Red Pill content creator, um, Yorkshire MGTOW. Um, he doesn't put out a lot of volume when it comes to his work, but what he does put out is really high quality, and I encourage you to go check him out. Um, when talking about marriage and divorce, we always hear the 50% divorce rate out there, um, but nobody really thinks about the other 50%. Um, people think, okay, well, if 50% of people are divorced, that must mean the other 50% of people are happy. And that is a completely misleading uh, idea to have in your mind. Um, and it's also a misleading idea that feminism likes to promote. Um, you know, women are thinking that the the good 50% is what they're, they'll be, you know, aiming for. Whereas, you know, uh, men are usually <laughs> hoping not to hit that the bad 50%. Now, if you look at you know the other 50 percent and start breaking it down you'll realize that marriage is not as cut and dry as these numbers make it look um, there's people who are in unhappy marriages all the time and there's r various reasons why um, as you can see on the chart probably the top reasons are going to be if you have children with your wife you are going to try and keep your children together and keep the family unit together. You don't want to lose your children. Um, you don't want to cause trauma to them, but it happens all the time and it's unfortunate. Um, the other reason that's probably the most common is simply the fear of divorce itself, especially for men. Men have everything to lose in a divorce. Uh, men are ruled against oh, about 90% of the time in family courts. They lose their children, they lose the house, they lose the cars, they lose the money, they lose the retirement. It goes on and on and on. Women are given basically cash and prizes in a golden parachute when they leave uh, from a by divorce. And so many men just get stuck thinking, okay, I better stick it out and just live a miserable, unhappy, unfulfilling life with this woman that I'm married to rather than losing my shorts in a divorce and losing my children. Uh, if you don't have children, you probably have fear of divorce as your number one reason. But if you do have children, you know, those two kind of go together. The other reason, um, which I think is probably the third um, most popular reason, is the time that you've invested with your wife. If you are married, you probably have been with that person for some amount of time. Um, you've built up a lot of memories, you've established yourself in a home, um, you have, you know, uh, combined interests that you've shared throughout the years, hobbies, whatever, vacations you've taken, family memories, um, spending holidays together, things like that. And you don't want to just throw all that away. This is called the sunk cost fallacy. Um, and it pertains to many other examples in life. You have somebody who just keeps trying and trying and trying. They would rather keep trying at something that they're failing rather than just admit failure and start over and you know lose what they've invested into that time. So um, it's very hard to give up something that you've put a lot of work into. Um, it's a natural human um, quality that we all have but we that's why it's important to understand human nature and learn to basically not be um, held back by our own nature another common reason why many people stay in a failed marriage is all is religion um, some people might uh, see that as going against whatever their religious beliefs are um, many religions say you you not you aren't supposed to get divorced you're supposed to get married you stay together you know till death do you part and it's a sin if you get divorced or you know whatever it may be in your religion so that's a very common reason why people um, stay in a failed marriage <clears throat> another common reason especially in today's 
uh, economy in today's times is money. Um, times are tough. Money is um, not easy to come by these days. Um, the dollar is not worth uh, what it was back in the you know back in the day. So people may not be able to afford to you know move out on their own. They look at each other as something of an economic dependence, and they simply stay together because it's easier to live with each other than live without and try to struggle making it on your own. Another common uh, reason is family pressure or even pressure from friends. You have, um, you know, your in-laws that are, you know, building a relationship with you from your marriage. You have uh, extended relatives. You have, you know, somebody's children from an aunt or an uncle that have became friends with your children out of your marriage and you would feel horrible breaking them up and basically no longer having certain people in their lives as long as um, as well as your own so and, and I've been there personally um, I was married I had a um, I had in-laws that I liked better than my wife <laughs> at the time um, and that was one of the major factors in why I stayed in my marriage for a long period of time. Um, I really enjoyed the extended family that I inherited from my wife at the time, and it was hard for me to give that up, but I had to. So um, another common issue is age. Some people get to an age where they think they're too old to try again. Um, they're too old to, you know, get out of their shell and just either date again, or they're too old to um you know, they have this fear of getting lonely and dying alone. Um, so that's a, a big issue. But uh, MGTOW is all about um, creating a secure future for yourself so you don't feel that way. You become a better person and become more independent, whether it's financially or otherwise. And no matter what age you are, you can always be um, in a good place in life. Another common issue is false hope. Uh, many, many people stay in horrible relationships married or uh, or unmarried thinking that things are just going to get better um they keep trying keep trying maybe they go to counseling maybe not and these relationships just uh get worse and worse and worse and they just keep grasping on to these thin strands of false hope and that's all they're hanging on to so um that's another common issue low self-worth um, that can be something along the lines of mental uh, issues like codependency, um, uh, borderline personality disorders, um, which are more prevalent in female than male. Um, but people have issues where they think they can't live with the other without the other person um, for whatever reason. They have low self-esteem. They have confidence issues. Um, they think they can't live without the person that they're with. They can't do any better. Maybe they have um, image issues. Maybe they think they're too fat, too ugly, too stupid, too whatever. Then they'll never get anybody that's as good as the person that they're with. You can work on your own self-esteem issues by yourself and, and fix those. Um, that's another you know key factor in the MGTOW uh, lifestyle. So, so then we get down to the last two here, <clears throat> and we really get to you know, the true picture on how marriage plays out in many people's lives. And you see, you have a very small amount of people who are truly happy in their marriage. Um, I personally, I don't think I've ever seen a single man or, or a single person, whatever, look at a marriage and be like, oh, I wish I could give up everything I have for that. You know, you've seen so many issues with unhappy men in marriages, women that are just running men to the ground in marriages, uh, basically um, using them like a, a horse they're just beating to death. Um, you know, the whole happy wife, happy life mantra is something that has destroyed many men. Many men have put themselves in that position, though, unfortunately. Many men um, are willing to put themselves through hell um, in order to satisfy a marriage. Um, but I think a lot of that uh, the reasons that they're willing to do so has to do with all the other reasons that I listed previously. You know, they think, oh, I better make my wife happy out of fear rather than out of, you know, uh, any sort of mutual benefit to the marriage, the relationship, or the family unit that they're in. 
And what's really crazy about all of this is that you have people that actually consider the odds when they're thinking about whether to get married or not. And that's if you have to consider odds of getting divorced or not, you are no way in, in any stretch of the imagination in a position to get married. If you're having to sit here and think about, oh, well, there's only a 50% chance of me getting a divorce um, and, you know, 50% chance of me, you know, staying married. So that's pretty good. If you, if, no, if you're even thinking, like I said, if you're even thinking about that, it, it's, it's, you're not ready to get married. You're not in a secure enough relationship to get married if that's even entering your mind. Um, and, and when you are looking at these odds, you aren't looking at them correctly. Um, people just, like I said, they think of the 50% good and the 50% bad. And well, no, it's not 50, 50, it's 50% divorce. It's 49% married, but miserable. And you know, maybe 1% happy if you're lucky. So that's really the way that people should be looking at it. So. Um, that's pretty much it that I wanted to point out some things that not a lot of people talk about when it comes to the other 50%. Um, it's a real eye opener once you think about things, um, for what they really are. And that's what the red pill is all about. You know, seeing things, um, with a, a different perspective, um, <clears throat> and using that information to make better life choices. Um, so anyway, I thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there. Keep yourself educated and Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.